welcome to the Daily Mind Trap, where my hope is that collectively we can learn about our world, develop self-awareness, and maybe even find comfort in chaos. Today, I want to talk about change, what it means, why we're scared of it, and what kinds of things we can do to elicit that feel-good feeling that comes with a good change. I'm going to be honest, I am not very good at small talk. I mean, I can do it, but I don't love it. Instead, I find myself wavering between complex, super serious existential debates and acting like a fool to make people laugh. I'm either 100% energy or I'm flatlined on the couch watching cringy TV. I regularly change my opinions about things when I learn more about them and I struggle with consistency. It's never been something I've been good at and I don't think it's as simple as being driven or disciplined or having willpower. So anyway, given these attributes, you would think that change is something that I might be kind of comfortable with. But the truth is, change is really tough, right? So what is change? Well, when I think of change, my first thought is about these big changes. Changes in your education. Changes from being a young person to being an adult. Changing jobs. Moving cities. Life changes. Changes from being a regular person to being a parent. A chemical change is when one substance... Hello. Oh, the puppies are here. Hello. The puppies are here. And they're sweet. They're so sweet. A chemical change is when one chemical substance is transformed into another or it goes through a process of transformation. Think about like when iron turns into rust. So change can be described as something that goes through a process and comes out as something new. Change is happening all around us all the time. So when it comes to our own lives, why do we fear change? I think I'm scared of change because change can bring about dormant anxieties. It can bring up stuff that make me fear the unknown path ahead. I'm scared of change when I'm forced to go beyond my comfort zone without any knowledge of whether or not it will work out. And I just have to trust my skills and my experience and my knowledge and my instincts and trust that that will just carry me through. I guess that's called confidence. I think we're all prone to getting stuck in certain biases that make us I got a bun bun and she's a sweet baby, a little sweet little baby. (laughs) Where was I? So yeah, we have to trust ourselves. But I think we're all prone to getting stuck in certain biases that make us want to cling to consistency and avoid discomfort. Like if you grew up moving house a lot and you went to a lot of new schools and maybe your parents got divorced and you were exposed to a lot of change that was imposed on you involuntarily, change and the uncertainty and pain that can come with it can lead people to become resistant and fearful of new experiences. Experiencing change when you aren't prepared for it can be really disruptive. It could hold you back a grade or it could make it harder for you to develop deeper connections with people. And it can impose these limiting beliefs that you carry with you about your potential to accomplish things in life. One of the most recognized theoretical and clinical frameworks for behavior change is called the trans theoretical model. And simply put, it outlines five stages of the change process. Pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. If you'd like to read more about this specific model, I'll put some resources in the description below. What I like the most about this and other conceptualizations of a change process is the understanding that change is not the action of a new behavior. 
that's one part of it is actioning the change. But there are other critical parts to changing that if we give attention to, we might see better results. And that mediation between wanting to change, changing a little, changing a lot, going back and forward and back and forward again, all of that is all part of the process of changing. Or in other words, it's always shit until it's not. It makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with the idea that things could be different in the future and while I can't exactly know what those things are going to be, I can make sure that I am in the best possible place to be able to deal with whatever challenges come up in my life. So I like knowing that I can prepare for change. And you can too. We can actively set up the situation to learn how we could change and how best to do it. Instead of waiting for a situation that forces us to adapt in the moment and be reactive, we can prepare for the inevitable changes and challenges of life before we need to. Research in neuroscience has shown that uncertainty can register in our brains pretty similarly to the way an error would. And our minds are trying to correct this error before we can feel comfortable again. But the way I see it, preemptive preparation for change can allow me to feel some confidence in myself instead of the fear of being caught off guard or unprepared in a challenging situation. I like to think of it like building a strong skeleton. Think about the way that your body works together, your skeletal system, your muscles, your tendons. So in times when you aren't feeling so fit, you've still got a solid foundation to fall back on, a strong bone structure that can help you to get through those difficult moments. But I always drink plenty of milk. For me, often the most difficult part of change is not being able to envision the positives that could come afterwards. So here's a couple of things that I find useful in getting past this wine spot. Number one, preventing regret is very motivating. I often think about my future self lying on my deathbed, looking back at this current time in my life and wondering how I might feel about my decisions. What advice would I give myself about this current time? Probably something about not letting my insecurities dictate my decisions. And number two is about finding opportunities for awe. Awe is recognized when I can stop in the moment and mentally acknowledge something positive about whatever is going on around me. And then feeling gratitude for what I'm experiencing, feeling grateful for where I am in that moment. I'm gonna call this generating awe because as I've previously alluded to, this is, you know, it's, a, it's an ongoing process of trying things, finding ways to feel inspired from something in your immediate environment, and then using that power to motivate you to have confidence in your own life. And that all sounds like I'm a self-help guru, um, and I don't know how else to say it without it sounding like that. But I'll work on it. Okay, so some of these suggestions might seem really odd, but here's some of the things that I've found beneficial in generating a shift in perspective and things that have helped me prepare for change in my own life. Cold showers. I know that lots of self-help gurus talk about cold showers and I was incredibly critical of these for pretty much my whole life and even in winter, I don't think I can handle it. But now that it's summer, a cold shower every morning actually does make me feel better and pick me up, even when it's uncomfortable. Uh, a haircut. I recently cut all my hair off and aside from feeling lighter because I'm not weighed down by this mass of dead hair, having a new look, a new way of dressing in the morning and doing my hair, it was a, a prompt for a shift in perspective. 
Um, I've talked about meditation on this channel before and I'll probably talk about it a lot more. Again, I ignored the use of meditation for most of my life and I can confidently say now that I see the benefits and it really does help me to feel better and more inspired and more motivated to do the things that I wanted to do. Here's some other things. Swimming, particularly in deep water flying or swinging or jumping just play just play and movement on a similar track hiking to a really nice view can blow my mind sometimes at just how beautiful this planet that we live on is here's some other things that i think we should all do if you have any eye problems or if you haven't seen an optometrist in a while go see one a new prescription for your eyeglasses literally helps you to see the world differently and better. And likewise, go get your teeth cleaned. You know that weird feeling when you get your teeth cleaned? You know that weird feeling that you get and you can't stop sort of, you know, tonguing the front of your teeth? And then you're like, God, was I walking around with all of that crap in my teeth for so long? Just go get your teeth cleaned. That's a pretty easy one if you have access to seeing a dentist. I appreciate that not everybody does or can afford that. And lastly, there's heaps of art, books, podcasts, documentaries, and movies that inspire me like this too. And even TikTok creators. Although I think it's really easy to get sidetracked on TikTok. So if you're not sure what I'm on about here, then that's okay. The point is that we're looking for new opportunities to disrupt our worldview and perspectives. It's a search for moments that allow us to feel inspired and also to feel grateful for the life we have and what we could have. I guess we're looking to establish a personal sense of growth and resiliency in ourselves before we are challenged by difficult situations. And look, despite all of the internal fears that I have sometimes, I believe there is something awe-inspiring about change. A fresh start can feel invigorating. It can give me a new hope for the future to come. And it can allow me to see opportunities in my environment that I previously hadn't considered before. Okay, so, I'm going to leave you with some wise words from my 93 year old Nana. And if you've stuck with me till this point, thank you very much for watching. So a few years ago, in the midst of a family reunion dinner table fight over whether gay people should be allowed to marry each other, my tiny 90 year old Chinese Nana declares with the utmost conviction, you can't stop change. <laughs> Is there anything else to say?